Hello, this is Watch All About with another watch review, and in this review, we are looking at two offerings from a brand called Rob Hayes. Now, Rob Hayes are a brand coming out of Stockholm in Sweden, and this is the Berkeley. And within the box is the Yosemite. Now, the reason why I've done this is that um, I'm going to be brutally honest. The Berkeley, probably not really worth too much of your time and attention. It's just another one of those kind of Daniel Wellington minimalist style watches priced at 200 euros or 175 pounds. I'm going to be brutally honest. Yes, it is nice, but it's exactly the same as so many other watches that we see in this kind of style. So uh, it's nice that it's got like a little... Um, uh, sunburst uh, galvanized steel dial to it however nothing else is too outstanding to justify the price in my opinion so I'm just going to put that to the side there um, and this review is primarily going to be about the, the Yosemite because that is a watch for serious consideration so if we open it up we'll have a look at how the Yosemite is unpacked so we have a nice little certificate here this looks pretty good nice little piano uh, box and here we have the watch in question all right so now we're talking if I just open this up let's get rid of this box and have a look at the watch in closer detail so nice packaging as you can see really nice uh, uh, feel to it all as well very good quality let me move that over there so this is the Rob Hayes Yosemite now this has got an RRP of 800 euros now you might feel that's a fair amount of uh, money however it is swiss made it does have a, a Salita sw200-1 uh, movement as well so as far as swiss made automatic movements go you know uh, uh, watches go i think uh, it is probably a little bit higher than usual than you can get other watches for sorry should i say however i think the price is probably you know reasonable for um for the the quality of the watch because it is a lovely lovely watch um so let's discuss some of the specs of this watch in particular so we've got if i just pop it on let's think about the uh the sizing so we've got a 40 mil diameter a height of 10 mil and a lug to lug length of 45 and a half mil. Uh, so it fits really nicely. Obviously it is a, a smart dress watch. Um, so it, it fits that sizing really nicely. 40 mil diameter I think is, is perfect. I've got a, just over a seven inch wrist, about seven and a quarter inch wrist, and I think it just fits really nicely. Very comfortable on. 81 grams is the total weight as well. So very nice uh, to wear easy to wear as well water resistance is five atmospheres or 50 meters so you get a measure of protection there don't go swimming with it however um lug width is 20 mil so that's a nice uh, size uh, in relation to the uh, to the case you can get so many different uh straps at 20 mil lug width as well so you'll be able to dress it uh not that you necessarily need to replace the the strap um but it's good that it's got that uniform size uh, the warranty is two years on both of these watches as well, both the Yosemite and also uh, the Berkeley. Uh, so finally, the movement, the Salita SW200-1 is basically just a, um, a direct um, clone of the ETA 2824-2, uh, um, which, as we all know, uh, is probably one of the most uh, uh, well-recognized automatic movements going. Um, the Salita is proven to be much more popular because the Swatch Group is starting to, to stop providing other manufacturers with the ETA movement. So the, uh, the Salita SW200-1 is getting used in a lot of alternative watches, which is, uh, which is great for them. Uh, but it's also, you know, good to start, good to see it, uh, being used in more reputable brands, brands as well. Accuracy on this one is 4 point plus 4.6 seconds a day. So it's within COSC specs, which is impressive. And um, other specs include 38 hour power reserve. It's got a high beat rate of 28.8 thousand beats per hour. So it ticks at eight, eight ticks a second. You know, everything is exactly the same as the ETA movement, basically. Uh, and it has a uh, automatic and hand winding capabilities and a hacking second hand as well. And obviously we have a date there at three. Okay, so the price, 800 euros or about 700 quid. Yes, that is quite a lot of money. Um, and, uh, you know, I appreciate that. But um, for, a, for a Swiss made automatic movements, you know, sometimes they can demand that much. Uh, let's be uh, completely honest. Um, it probably would be fair if it was around 500 pounds. 
uh, but let's discuss it in closer detail anyway. So starting off with the dial. Now it has this option has the beautiful sunray dial to it. As you can see there, it picks up the reflection so nicely. Um, and this coupled with the hour markers is just a, a delightful sight for the eyes when you're catching the light well. Talking about the hour markers, um, if I can get a, a shot here, very nice depth to them. And uh, one particular feature which I absolutely love is the 12 uh, hour marker. And as you can see, the X in particular has a beautiful little cross section uh, cut through there. Really, really nice in the in the actual metal uh, because the, the array of reflections you get from these um, hour markers is just really eye catching, really nicely finished as well, even up close, you know, perfect uh, construction. The uh, train track, subtle printing around the outside frames it nicely and then every the, the other printing is all very minimal. So we have Rob Hayes at the top, Swiss made at the bottom and that's it in terms of print work. Uh, the date wheel, date window, uh, neatly cut out of the dial as well. So uh, everything's very simple, very minimal, but done in an effective manner. The hands as well, simple again, but not same old, same old. You know, a little bit different. They're sort of like a tapered baton with um, C3 Superluminova loom. Uh, discussing the loom, yes, it's C3 Superluminova, but it's not the, the strongest. Uh, I'll show a loom shot now. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, with a dress watch, loom isn't the, uh, you know, the, the most important thing, uh, as it would be on a, on a dive watch, for instance. So it doesn't concern me too much. However, it would be nicer if it was a little bit stronger. Uh, so the, uh, the dial in general, perfectly uh, constructed, really nice to look at as well. Moving on to the case then. So <clears throat> case is a standard barrel shape. However, we do have a, a number of very nice um, aspects to it. First of all, starting off with the sapphire crystal, sitting on top, obviously uh, it's sapphire, so it's nine out of 10 on the uh, Mohs scale of hardness. Very, very hard. Has a really good layer of anti-reflective coating as well. Uh, unless I'm reflecting it directly in a light, for instance, like so. Um, all of the angles, very good clarity, and you get a nice little flash of the anti-reflective coating uh, too. Um, moving on to the, the case main, so uh, starting off with the bezel, polished bezel, so that frames the dial nicely and splits up the case from a side uh, view perspective. But the bezel itself is actually split up into a couple of different levels. You can see a very subtle little channel around the outside here. Uh, which which is good again, you know splits up the reflections nicely moving on to the case proper uh, brushed side polished tops of the lugs as well and uh, Moving on to the the crown uh, Has the Rob Hayes logo nice and deeply uh, embossed on the end there very easy to use and uh, nicely manufactured so just moving on to the case back fully polished Exhibition window as well, showcasing the uh, movement really nicely. So the movement, the um, Salita SW200-1 has a little bit of um, customization to it there. You can see we have the Rob Hayes logo and uh, the words first edition. And then uh, interestingly, actually, um, numerals on it for um, for which uh, version, which edition this is, which is a pretty, uh, pretty nice, something you don't usually see on the rotor itself. So it's good to see that amount of uh, detailing that they've been, um, they put this uh, watch through, uh, the serial number that is. Moving on to the uh, leather strap then, so uh, a standard crocodile print, as you can see there, it's got a nice matte finish to it as well, which I much prefer than a, than a shiny patent leather. Uh, very supple, very comfortable to wear, easy as, uh, easy as you like to fit, thanks to the um, uh, pretty uh, standard uh, butterfly clasp, but the butterfly clasp features a nice deep Rob Hayes logo engraved on it as well. So a uh, decent, um, decent quality through and through, to be honest, from start to finish. Let's get the macro lens on and have a look at it in even closer detail. Okay, so starting off with the dial, we see our print work, Rob Hayes, and we see our very nice galvanized steel uh, backdrop to the dial itself. Uh, moving on upwards to this beautiful um, 12 marker, hour marker, you can see there the X, very beautifully done, really nice design on that. The rest of the hour markers too, 
all pitched, highly polished as well. So they provide a beautiful uh, array of reflections, as you can see. And we have that printed uh, track around the outside too. Uh, having a look at the hands, so we see they're pitched and polished and sort of like that tapered button, as I mentioned beforehand, with the loomed center. Second hand, very straightforward point, as you can see there. Swiss made printed at the bottom there. As we move around, we can see the uh, chamfered edge of the date wheel, date window, which is nice uh, with the date wheel inside. And then moving on to the, let's just have another quicky, cheeky gander of the dial there, really nicely done. Moving on to the, uh, the case then, and the bezel itself. So you can see here, have a very cheeky, subtle, uh, brushed inside edge there, which is a, a detail that you don't necessarily notice until you look at it really up close. And we can see there the little ridge of the, uh, the bezel as well with this polished uh, backdrop. And then moving on to the case main, see a brushed side there and a polished top of the lugs, nice little uh, shoulder there as well, shapely, simple but shapely. Moving on to the crown, so here's the Rob Hayes logo embossed on the end, and a really good grip on that as well. Really easy to use, and it looks really nicely done. Flipping it over, if I just give it a quick wipe. The case back, as you can see, is fully polished, very simple in terms of design, just got some details around the uh, the outer edge on the top and the bottom, saying so Swiss made there and then first edition at the top. Moving on to the movement itself, here you can see the the Salita movement with the rotor there, with the print work, Rob Hayes logo, first edition, number 57 out of 100, and we can see it ticking away there. Nice, simple, but effective caliber used uh, with it's not the uh, elaborate version or anything like that, pretty straightforward uh, bridges, but it's still nice to see, uh, of course. <clears throat> and then finally moving on to the strap, here's the uh, alligator print work on that. You can see the matte finish to it as well. Flipping it over, we have a very uh, cheeky little uh, Rob Hayes print work. And then finally, the butterfly clasp is pretty standard, but it's good to see that we've got very deep engraving of Rob Hayes on the top bar. All right. So uh, the Rob Hayes Yosemite is definitely a very nicely constructed watch. Uh, just going back to the Berkeley briefly, obviously we haven't really discussed it too much, but just a little bit of closer detail. Um, as I mentioned previously, it's, it's very, very uh, straightforward, simple, Daniel Wellington style. Yes, it's nicely constructed, but we've seen these watches so often. And to be honest, most of us are tremendously bored of them. And uh, to ask an RP of 200 euros is, I think, a bit outrageous for, for my personal uh, opinion. Obviously, if you like this style and you want to watch that looks like this uh, from a you know reasonably reputable brand, then uh, this would be a good option. However, I personally definitely wouldn't buy it. Uh, so I'll pop that back down there. The Yosemite, on the other hand, very nice design, excellent construction, great specs as well. Um, the design is simple, but it has a couple of really beautiful little uh, tweaks to it. Um, I keep on mentioning, you know, the uh, the 12, the applied hour markers at 12, it's subtle and you don't really notice it in a video like this, but actually um, when you're wearing it, it is a really nice design uh, feature. Um, and they've done a really great job of making something so small and subtle, you know, a key focus. Everything else very nicely done, you know, simple design. The price, I think, is a little bit of a sticking point for me. 800 euros, about 700 pounds. It is a little bit steep. Um, 
it's not to say it's not a great watch, but I think realistically the you know the RRP might be a little bit on the high side for my liking, but I think it's still a fantastic uh, watch. So uh, yeah, well done to Rob Hayes for creating something simple, um, and uh, you can probably call it minimalist in a certain um, manner of speaking. But uh, well done to them for creating something you know a with a little bit of a, a unique uh, feel to it. And uh, as I say, construction is, is pretty much flawless from top to bottom, and it's Swiss made with that Salita movement. Really great watch. But uh, yeah, so um, if you like the look of it and you're happy to spend the money, then I would recommend it. So uh, that's uh, basically the bottom line. So thanks for watching, guys. This was the Rob Hayes Yosemite and also the, uh, the Berkeley. So uh, don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, and also comment your thoughts. Uh, on uh, this video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.